Hi, Debbie here, and thank you for joining me today. I have a blog hop and giveaway on my blog today. More details on that later. For now, let's jump straight in with the card. And I have a watercolored flower garden to share, which includes individually watercolored and die cut pieces that are then layered together to create a sweet scene. I use the lavender garden set from Samsung Stamps new release. There are dies available for every single image, even the tiny flowers. There's a lovely combination of garden truck and watering can, as well as a couple of different flower combinations. I put all the dies to one side while I worked on stamping and colouring. I used Fabriano Artistico Extra White Cold Press Watercolour Card and Antique Linen Distress Ink. The watercolour card comes in a gum block and I used a spatula to release um, the edges from the block and placed it in the misty before laying out the stamps I wanted. I made sure there was enough space around each image for the matching die. I used Daniel Smith paints in the main, my favourite, perylene green for the leaves, although I did add in touches of green gold. The main colour and depth of the flowers came from pyro crimson. As for the wooden trug, that was a combination of transparent red oxide and raw umber. The watery can was a shadow violet with touches of pimentite genuine for some delicious granulation. I'll play some music for now while I paint and I'll be back to explain the background and finishing the card. flowers very loose with just hints of colour and touches of more depth here and there in the centres. For the flower stamens I used a black micron pen and without trying to refer too much to the original images which had much more detail than I was able to put in or want to put in to be honest. You know me and I can't stop fiddling and adding more layers and depth of colour. 
I'm still not finished even now that I'm adding the dyes and cutting these flowers and such out. Later on I will still be going in and adding more. I used micropore tape to adhere the dies and I liked how easy this tape was to remove afterwards when releasing the die cuts. Moving on to the background and I am currently in love with what a spritzer speckled egg distress spray stain onto a wet surface can do. I used another piece of Fabriano watercolour card and wet the card with a water bottle before spritzing the stain onto the wet surface. Immediately the colour is wicked away and spreads through the water to give lovely soft but interesting backgrounds. I kept the heat gun moving over the card while I dipped it into the slightly inky and wet surface of my mat. Eventually I spritzed some speckled egg directly onto the mat along with some water. With a hazy blue background sorted I went back to my watercolours to add a ground for the die cut elements to sit on. I used shadow violet and touches of Piemontite Genuine and Perylene Green. I sharpened a few edges and deepened the odd shadow with a Faber-Castell polychromo pencil. I added all the die cuts with foam tape, arranging the flowers to be coming from the wooden trug with a watering can in front. I like how layering of the die cuts adds dimension and builds the scene. My only regret is that the trug is hidden so much, however on an A2 card with a portrait orientation this was the best option. I splattered the card with Winsor & Newton permanent white gouache. Perfect Pearls powder and also a little perylene green paint. After which I trim the panel down to be just smaller than an A2 car base. I do this slowly, taking a little off each side until I'm happy about the placement of the focal piece on the finished panel. For the sentiment I took a greeting from the Lavender Garden set and stamped it in clear embossing ink on black card which I treated with anti-static powder. I sprinkled with white embossing powder and heat set. I am kicking myself now that I didn't try out the new cream embossing powder which will likely tone better with the creamy colour of the watercoloured card. My preferred method of trimming out a skinny sentiment is to use a clear ruler with grid lines and a scalpel. I lined up the sentiment with the grid lines so that my cut lines would be straight and then decided where I wanted to cut above the letters. A quick swipe with a craft knife against the metal edge of the ruler and quickly you have a sentiment strip which is perfectly cut. I cut it out on a self-healing mat to be safe. I added the sentiment strip to the card front with foam squares. Two squares one end and one square the other to ensure the levels were right when overlapping the flowers. I added the panel to a card base cut and scored from Nina Desert Storm card and here's a tip I got asked to show a little more clearly. I picked up this tip many years ago from Julie Ebersole. Remove any tape backers from the centre of the panel and then fold the tape back on itself on the four corners so that only the corners of the card have exposed tape along their edges of the panel. Align on the card base and because only the corners of the card are sticky and the folded back tape makes the panel sort of float over the base, you can ensure your best effort at sticking it on straight before pulling the adhesive backer tabs to finally secure the panel onto the card front. I embellished the panel with Hero Arts pink enamel dots and eggshell pearls held in place with Gina K Connect glue and used a Marvie jewel picker tool to help me wrangle the small embellishments into place. I seem to be doing this more often at the moment, taking a look at a card when it's finished and deciding, well, it's not quite finished yet and adding more colour or depth. I added to the shadows beneath the die cuts increase the depth of colour on the flowers and a few final touches to the watering can too. And that completes this card with a watercoloured flower garden built from individually watercoloured pieces layered up to create a sweet scene. Now I mentioned that there is a blog hop and giveaway going on. It's to celebrate the new Hello Beautiful release from Samsa Stamp and you'll find all the details in the link that I will leave in the YouTube description below this video. I'll also leave links to the products that I've used today. I want to thank you for joining me and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you'd subscribe to this channel. And before I go, here's a couple of videos I think you also might like. Thanks and I'll see you next time.